is one of the most important pieces of hardware for gamers, second only to the CPU and of course the GPU. But just because it ranks lower than these two in terms of the overall performance impact, doesn't mean it's any easier to navigate the endless sea of technical terminology present on the RAM's spec sheet. And the thing is, you don't need to know the minute intricacies of how the RAM works and how each of the various specifications operate. In fact, many of them don't really mean a thing if all you're interested in is gaming. So with that in mind, we've dedicated today's video to the topic of choosing the right RAM. If you're building a new PC and have thought yourself stuck, this video will hold all the answers you need. So without any further ado, let's begin. As always, we'll go through some of the basics real quick, starting with the most rudimentary question. What is RAM? RAM is an acronym that stands for Random Access Memory. So just like SSDs and HDDs, RAM is a type of memory. But unlike these two devices, RAM can only store data while it's powered. On the flip side, however, RAM is significantly faster. It's several times faster than even M.2 SSDs. The PC makes use of this speed by constantly overwriting and refreshing the data inside the RAM so that the CPU and the GPU can always have quick access to relevant data without having to store it anywhere permanently. As such, it is crucial for efficient multitasking. So if you like having a lot of programs open at once, but this invariably leads to choppy performance, chances are you need more RAM. Now we should mention that laptops and desktop PCs use slightly different RAM modules. In particular, laptop RAM, which is known as SoDIMM, or Small Outline Dual Inline Memory Module, is smaller and has fewer pins. By extension, this means that the DIMM RAM, or Dual Inline Memory, that desktop PCs use is larger and has more pins. 28 more pins to be exact for a grand total of 288 pins as opposed to the 260 found on SODIMS. Of course you don't need to memorize any of this but we wanted to paint a broad picture before getting to our point and the point is this you cannot use laptop RAM with desktop PCs just as you cannot fit desktop RAM into laptops. They should be easy enough to distinguish at first glance, but just in case, we'll repeat the technical terms. You want dim memory for your desktop PCs, whereas you should be looking for so dim memory if you're looking to upgrade your PC with more RAM. Another acronym that is unavoidable when dealing with RAM is DDR. DDR stands for Double Data Rate. There are more acronyms related to this, but you don't need to concern yourself with those. All you need to know as a gamer is that DDR has gone through four iterations over the past two decades. DDR, DDR2, DDR3, and DDR4. Each one is better than the last, and there's really no reason not to go with DDR4, as it's significantly faster than DDR3. However, we have to know that DDR4 has only reached mass market adoption somewhere around 2016. This is a crucial piece of information to keep in mind in case you haven't upgraded your PC since then, because DDR3 motherboards are not compatible with DDR4 memory. So in case you have a DDR3 motherboard, our advice is to replace it, as DDR3 is already on the verge of becoming completely obsolete. It's also important to mention that DDR4 motherboards are not backwards compatible with DDR3 RAM. So if you've got a DDR3 motherboard, your solutions are either to buy more DDR3 RAM, which isn't a real long-term solution for any serious gaming, or to buy a new DDR4 motherboard and DDR4 RAM to go with it, which will be much more expensive and probably require a new CPU as well. Now, in case you don't know whether you have a DDR3 or DDR4 motherboard, here's how you can check. Just search for system information and then other system summary, you'll be able to see which motherboard you have in the system module field. Once you have this tidbit of information, you just find that model on the manufacturer's website and check to see which iteration of DDR you're dealing with. And while we're on the topic of motherboards, let's go through the number of RAM slots you can expect to find on each motherboard. 
The number varies based on the form factor of the motherboard. Mini ITX motherboards only support two RAM slots, while ATX motherboards support four. Micro ATX motherboards usually have four slots as well, but models with just two slots do exist. There are also eATX motherboards with up to eight slots, but this is getting outside of gaming territory and into the realm of workstations. Do also note that physical restrictions aren't everything. Each motherboard has a hard cap on the amount of RAM it can support. However, if you're a gamer, you don't really need to concern yourself with this. You'll be hard pressed to find a motherboard that doesn't support at least 32 gigabytes of RAM. And as you'll see soon, even this is an overkill for gaming PCs. Just like motherboards, CPUs also have a RAM ceiling. Although once again, this really shouldn't ever be an issue with gaming PCs, since modern 64-bit CPUs generally support up to 64 or 128 gigabytes of RAM. So as long as you have a relatively new 64-bit CPU, you don't really need to think about this. And if you have an older CPU, once again, you can find all the relevant information on the specification page on the manufacturer's website. Next up, we have to discuss the clock speed. You've heard this all before if you watched any of our previous RAM, CPU, or GPU videos. But we will say it again. Clock speed is a specification that determines how fast RAM can process data, and it's measured in megahertz. Now, generally speaking, higher clock speeds result in better gameplay experiences. That's certainly the case with GPUs and CPUs. But while the same holds true for RAM clock speeds, it's important to know that the performance boost you'd be getting by installing faster RAM is minuscule. We're talking single digit FPS increases, but you can bet that the price difference between faster and slower RAM modules won't be in the single digits. So if you want to get the best value for your money, pay no heed to RAM clock speeds. So long as you've got DDR4 RAM, the rest should work out just fine. For the purposes of gaming, the difference between 3200 MHz and 2400 MHz is really not that grand. What really counts is capacity. And as for capacity, our advice is to go with 16 gigabytes of RAM if possible. 8 gigabytes is still enough for most games, but this will leave little to no RAM for other programs to use, so you'll want to get into the habit of turning off all background processes before running a demanding game with only 8 gigabytes of RAM to go around. The performance might be a bit choppy in some games, but it will by no means be unplayable. On the other hand, 32 gigabytes is a bit too much for gaming at the moment. If you have your sights set on more than just gaming, then this is fine. But if gaming is all you're interested in, then you're better off sticking to 16 gigabytes. You can always upgrade this to 32 gigabytes if you start running low on RAM, but chances are that DDR4 will become obsolete before games become that demanding. More importantly, no matter how much RAM you cram into your PC, it won't improve gameplay performance in the way that a better GPU or CPU would. So at the very least, you should never skimp on either of these components for the sake of more RAM. Besides, upgrading your RAM is easy, but upgrading the CPU or GPU is much, much trickier. So keep this in mind when deciding on the final build for your PC. Using multi-channel RAM has become a time-honored tradition among seasoned PC builders. But what are its actual benefits? After all, 8GB of RAM is 8GB of RAM, regardless of whether you use a single module or more. The same goes for any other specs, like clock speed for example. So on paper, you wouldn't really be able to see that much difference. But there is one key advantage to using multi-channel memory over single-channel memory, and that is added bandwidth. After all, there's only so much data that can be transferred between the CPU and a single RAM module, so dual and quad-channel configurations effectively serve to expand the bandwidth. The more channels you have, the greater the bandwidth. And as you may have guessed, more bandwidth generally means better performance. However, this isn't all that important for gaming. Rather, it's servers and workstations running memory-hungry software that transfers vast amounts of data that get a tangible performance boost from all the added bandwidth. This doesn't mean that games don't enjoy a slight performance boost from having access to multi-channel RAM, but slight is very much a keyword here. However, we still urge PC builders to go with multi-channel setups, not because of the added bandwidth, but because of two other advantages. 
pricing and replacement. Getting multiple low capacity modules is generally cheaper than getting a single high capacity one. Now this may not always be the case as the lack of supply in some other market conditions can tip the scales in favor of single modules, but generally speaking this is how the math works out. So if you can get some added benefits at a lower cost, there really is no reason not to do so, especially when we take into consideration replacement as another benefit of multi-channel RAM. Namely, if one of your two 8GB modules were to die on you, you would still have a functioning PC. It would only operate on half the RAM, but it would still operate. On the other hand, if your one and only 16GB module malfunctions, well, tough luck. You are now effectively without a PC until you go out and buy a new RAM module. So to summarize, multi-channel memory configurations carry with them the benefits of higher bandwidth as well as a built-in fail-safe option, and they typically cost less than single-channel configurations with the same capacity. As far as we're concerned, the answer to this question is obvious. Go multi-channel. Although we should mention that while they're technically interchangeable, we don't advise combining different RAM modules, especially ones from different manufacturers. In theory, this works just fine, but in actuality, it can lead to some unexpected compatibility issues, crashes, and just an overall buggy performance. And lastly, we have to mention latency. This will be noted under either CAS or CL, with the actual amount given in clock cycles rather than nanoseconds. Latency is the amount of time that needs to pass before the read command being issued is available for the processor to access as data. Now, in case this sounds a little confusing, don't sweat it. Even if you don't quite get it, it doesn't really matter because RAM latency doesn't mean much to the average gamer. The benefits of lower latency RAM for gaming are pretty much non-existent, so this is a spec that can comfortably go to the bottom of the list of priorities when deciding on a RAM module for gaming. And that's pretty much all you need to know about RAM. Now we've covered a lot of ground in this video, so let's do a little recap, shall we? The first thing you need to check when buying RAM is whether you need a laptop RAM or a desktop RAM. The two are not interchangeable, so you won't be able to proceed any further without getting this part right. Always go with DDR4 RAM as it's faster and technically superior to DDR3. The only exception is if you already have a DDR3 motherboard and don't want to upgrade it. In this case, you will have to get DDR3 RAM. As far as the other RAM specs are concerned, capacity takes precedence over speed and latency. And finally, go for multi-channel configurations as it's not only cheaper but also performs slightly better and leaves you with a nice failsafe in case one of the RAM modules dies. We've made separate videos for most of the points discussed in this video, so if you want to go a bit more in-depth, we highly suggest giving them a shot. The links are in the description. And that about does it for this video. We hope you found it helpful. If you have, you can help us out by liking it and subscribing to our channel. And if you've got friends who you think could benefit from watching this video, help them out by sharing it either directly or on social media. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to click on the bell icon so that YouTube doesn't accidentally sneak new uploads past you. We upload new videos on a weekly basis, so the next one is just around the corner. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.